Hey guys, Wadok Studios here, and today we're going to do an episode 2 of Return to Retro, and the subject matter comes from a question that asked if um, there was any way that I could look into the cheap, you know, lighting shading model that's in Gloomwood. Um, so I pulled up a video, um, we'll just take a look at this real quick, and essentially from what I can tell, this is more than likely a Ford base rendering pass. It doesn't look like it's being killed to death by TAA. There's, you know, a little bit of aliasing here that I can see. It's, it could be deferred without TAA. So it could be deferred with like, um, FXAA, but, um, these methods are very retro in nature. So, uh, I was pretty sure this is what was being talked about so yeah we'll jump back into the project real quick so um, as you can see here I um, I have these spotlights um, and we have this effect on these spotlights and I'm just gonna hit play so you guys can get the overall effect um, and you can see that it has a very volumetric feel um, Again, I am in deferred rendering, but I'm using uh, FXAA instead of TAA, so no smearing occurring. But this effect will work in forward rendering with MSAA as well. Um, should not be any issues there. Um, but I wanted to show with DX11, um, you know, you could keep Lumen in the scene and still have very cheap effects like this. And we'll do a stat FPS and we'll. Um, we will show what the max FP, uh, what the max, come on, FPS is going to be. Just so you guys can see, I'm well over 150, almost to 160 frames. Um, we're at about a six millisecond uh, overall time. Um, so everything's good in the world. So I'll hit shift escape here, we'll minimize and then um, we'll go take a look at things. Now, in the previous return to retro, I went back and reviewed my video and I talked about the BP Sky Sphere here. And I figured this is a good segue to talk about engine content because Unreal Engine 5 comes with volumetric sky and I touched on that. So like, you know, we have the sky atmosphere and the volumetric clouds and you know, the more expensive sky um, that comes as a default with UE5. But the great news is that if you show engine content over here on the left hand side, um, and I think it's in the settings, it's like, and maybe it's on the, um, it's been a while since I've done this, show engine and show plugin content right here. It's just always on for me. I apologize for that guys. But anyway, um, if you come into the content folder, um you can just highlight content and type sky and you'll be able to find the old school sky sphere you drag this in your scene get rid of the newer sky this guy's a lot cheaper um and this is just a really quick way to have a sky that you can update with the sun position the directional light position um that is you know probably a little bit more expensive than some marketplace skies like fast sky or um uh, good sky but it's going to live update for you it's not just a sky box and it does update with the sun position um, so just a little hint there now if you're in this engine content folder and you type volumetric um, it's gonna bring you to a place where you're gonna see these um, and we'll right click them and then we will browse um, show in folder view. Now it's going to bring you to a place with these materials and it's also going to bring you to um, a folder right up underneath this light beam that says mesh, right? And for you, what you're going to want to do is anything that you want out of here, um, I would recommend you drag into your own project and when it, when it prompts you so say I want to drag just this 
material here, you would pick copy. You don't want to move it from your engine directory because it modifies your engine files. You don't want to modify them in this directory because you want to be non-destructive to the engine content folder. Um, I'm just going to click off of it because I don't want to move it. I've already done this. Um, what I've actually done is created a material instance of that material and then moved it up to this level. So this way I can actually modify these parameters. So that's what you would do. You would take this material here, the MEV Lightbeam Master 01. You would right click it, create a material instance, and then move the material instance into your project. I'm going to share these settings with you just so you can see what my settings are set to. And then um, the reference texture I used was this fall off. Now, there are a few mesh options that you can use in that directory um, depending on the effect that you want. Um, and for me, I ended up going with something that's really pointy at the top. So it's kind of like this, basically just a comb. Um, so that's what I ended up going with, but based on the, you know, depending on the style that you want, you might want to do something different. Now, I have a blueprint that I went ahead and set up, and we'll just go take a look at it. Um, so there's nothing here, right? We have some a ghost event tick and a ghost event begin play. Neither one of these are costing anything. They're grayed out. So that means there's no ever overhead associated with them. Um, and on the construction script, you'll see what I'm doing is, and uh, this is going to look a little confusing because the light is sideways. The spotlight naturally faces in the X forward direction. But I added a static mesh, which is the, the comb. I applied the material to the comb. And then you'll want to go set your collision to no collision because you obviously don't want to collide with it. Um, the other thing is on the construction script, because I want this to be modified in the world outliner and I want to be able to um, have the cone reflect the spotlight settings, the construction script is going to take the inner cone angle, divide it by five and apply the world scale. And the spotlight annotation radius is going to impact the Z scale. So as I increase the annotation radius of the light up or down, you'll see the cone stretches with it. Um, and that's important based on like where you want your light to be, how far your light you want your light to go, um, because you want that effect to scale as you increase the annotation radius and you want it to um, to decrease as you decrease. Now, I've noticed a little bug here, um, but you can always adjust this in your world outliner. Most people don't know this, but if you want to, you can offset this as you increase this scale. For me, it wasn't that important, but as I increase the inner cone angle, you'll see it scales out. As I decrease it, it scales in. And as I push the annotation radius out, that cone will slide up because the Z value scale gets pushed in the location from the origin in the Z axis. And because the origin is not at the top of the cone, it doesn't push down from the top. It kind of spreads over the Z axis. So what you can do is come right here, select the static mesh, and then actually move it down. That's just a really quick fix for me to get exactly what I want, but you may want to do that with math um, and offset it, or you can go into the modeling tools and reset the origin on your cone and it'll just work. So just a little side trick there. Um, if you have a mesh and you really want to change the origin, then you can, uh, I think there's a edit pivot 
and then you can just drag this guy up to where you think you want it and hit accept. So now the pivot's going to be where you want it, basically. Um, and we'll take this guy, and as you can see, the comb is down. So we need to basically, um, we'll delete this. We got to go back into the blueprint here, and we need to slide that pivot back up on the z-axis because the location isn't really aligned with where it needs to be because now it's based on the pivot. So now if we hit compile, it's back where it needs to be. And now if we clone this guy and drag him over and adjust the annotation radius, you'll see that um, the scale is very much closer to the top. However, I didn't get all the way to the top. So we still have a little bit of offset climbing there, but that's a really, really quick little trick for you guys. Um, anyway, I'll hit play and you can see that the effect's there. Um, this is a really cheap thing. I know it says volumetric in the folder. It's a volumetric type of material or effect. It's really, really cheap. It's not expensive to do. This is not the same as um, having a volumetric sky based on your sun shaft here. Um, let me see. This is not the same as volumetric settings that are heavy, that are in your scene for volumetric sky. Um, I don't even think the BP sky sphere has volumetric settings on it, the old school one. Um, but your, your directional light, and I think your exponential height fog will, and as you can see, volumetric fog is not enabled. So I'm not going to get anything other than sun shaft occlusion from the sky, which I have the light underneath the world to give me the sunset. So you're not really going to see that right now. But um, hopefully this has been useful to you guys and was able to uh, help the requester. Um, develop a effect that they were looking for. Remember these spotlights do not have to be fully dynamic. If you really want to save some more, um, these spotlights can be set to static um, in your details. They can be stationary. And with stationary, that means that you can bake lights. You'll still get dynamic lighting from, you know, shadow casters here, but the the light itself will not be movable. It'll just be stationary in space and then it'll bake that um, light and any type of, you know, if you had volumetric lighting or volumetric fog, the volumetric information into um, the light mass volume uh, probes. So uh, yeah, that's it for this episode. If you guys have any other you know, requests or suggesting suggestions, uh, hit me up in the comments. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. And to all my Patreon members, uh, appreciate you. To all the Wild Ox Studio Discord members, uh, appreciate you guys. And keep the requests coming. Till next time, happy developing.